What's up, everyone? This is Ken, and welcome to the first episode of God Watch Em All. This is part of the Toys for Games Network, and this is a new podcast that's going to be chronicling the Pokemon anime one episode at a time uh, while going over the latest Pokemon news, stuff that's going on in the scene. Like I said, my name is Ken. I'm joined by my co-host, Melissa. She's also my wife. Hey, guys. And uh, we're real excited to be here, and like we said, we're chronicling the anime one episode at a time. We just got done watching episode one. Um, and it brought back a lot of memories. We're, we're old fogies here, so it's a lot of fun, uh, taking a trip down memory lane and watching something that's like almost 20 years old, uh, because it really brings us back to, uh, to a different time. The podcast is going to show, is going to be a companion to a bunch of social media stuff that we're doing. Uh, we're going to, we're going to be on Instagram. We're going to be doing Twitch streams, YouTube streams, uh, also some, uh, produced video content on YouTube as well as some editorial stuff on toysforgames.com. So we're really excited about the project and hope you guys connect with us uh, everywhere that we are because this is going to be a lot more than just the podcast. But, you know, when it comes down to it, this is all about the anime and reconnecting. Um, Melissa and I have been uh, a couple for a long time, and when we were younger, we were like 18, you know, years old. That's when Pokemon kind of launched. We were both out of high school already. And... We kind of fell in love with it then, and we were kind of really hardcore with it, and, you know, we're not afraid of the stigmas of being, you know, 18 years and 20 years old playing Pokemon at the time, but Melissa has waited online outside Toys R Us many a time for a Pokemon TCG card. Yes, I have. (laughs) And, you know, we saw uh, the Pokemon first movie together in the theater a bunch of times, and um, we had to stock up on Ancient Mew cards, (laughs) which we still have. (laughs) <laughs> um, but, uh, so, so we've kind of been in, you know, Pokemon fans for, uh, since it, it, it originally launched, but what happened with us was we were diehard TCG players and we never really got into the video games too, too much. Um, but after the, you know, they started pushing expansion after ex- expansion, we just kind of grew apart from playing the card games, but still loved Pokemon. Yeah, loving the characters. Yeah. And, um... But we kind of didn't play the game for a while. And we had like 20,000 cards in the house. And they were always there. And I would bust her chops constantly. Pretty much every time we were in a Toys R Us, you know, <laughs> I would nudge her when we're by the Pokemon cards and say, when are we getting back into this? And um, I said never. And she said never because that's how she rolls. <laughs> and it was bad. And, and you know, we have a seven-year-old. Uh, he's an eight-year-old now. He's an eight-year-old son who's a Pokemon nut. And him getting into it kind of brought us full circle. Yeah, it really did. Back into it, and uh, so I give him the credit of getting getting me back on the on the Pokemon wagon. One of the main points of this podcast is going to be to ha- help us as Pokemon fans reconnect with the brand and watch these shows again, uh, and kind of get reeducated and reacclimated to what Pokemon is all about uh, in preparation for the launch of Sun and Moon and. Melissa's been playing through X. Yes. Um, and almost you're, finished. You're almost finished. I think you're probably, I don't know, 30, 30 hours? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. I think she's like 30 hours in, um, and I've just been trickling through Y, um, but she's probably going to be completely done by the time, uh, you know, well ahead of when Sun and Moon come out, um, and you're going to get Sun? I don't know yet. So we're, that we still, is still on the table is what we're going to figure out. But all right. Anyway, we just started watching the episode. Uh, we got through it and we were cracking up the whole time. We forgot how humorous the show is. I was I was laughing the whole time. Yeah, it's hilarious. Pikachu is hysterical. The, just the way that they express his personality. It's he's just great. They make you fall in love with him instantly. Instantly, and and the animation style is really cool too because it's it has very very basic anime style, you know, blocking and low frame rate animation at some points, and then there's other points where there's like these really funky 360 degree camera angle kind of you know fully fully animated shots, backgrounds, and everything that are really cool. But so the episode originally aired on September eighth, nineteen ninety eight. So this is yeah. this is a long time. So this is I was three years out of high school already by that time. I was a year out of high school, yeah. and I remember specifically watching the first season that year and uh, falling in love with it just 
it just captured me. It was ah, oh, it's so good. Melissa's younger brother Kyle was um, he was ahead of the curve, and he actually had Japanese cards before the original base set launched here. Um, so he was die hard with it as you know he was much younger, and I would shuttle him to Pokemon events, <laughs> you know, and that's kind of you know what helped kickstart you know everything. So that's a long time ago that this came out, but so the episode starts. Ash is showing that he's ten years old. He's acting like a tough guy in his room. His mom busts in. Um, and by the way, Ash has got some really awesome uh, decorations in his yes. room. And they need to start making those in real life because my room would definitely have a lot of them. Well, there's a snor- there was a Snorlax on the shelf, and then I brought up this new Think Geek Snorlax chair that's coming out, 150 <clears throat> bucks. This giant beanbag plush chair. Actually, this is not. He has a Snorlax plush on his floor. On on the floor. On the floor, yes, because he's it. laying he's laying on it and talking to his mom when he goes to throw the Pokeball and she catches it yep. and the alarm opens up. Yep. So. Obviously, it's 11 o'clock at night in the episode. Ash is up too late. He can't go to sleep because he's all excited about seeing Professor Oak. It turns out he he sleeps in, misses the alarm, and wakes up in a complete panic. Um, And when he wakes up, he jets out of the house. He's still wearing his pajamas. He doesn't know what's going on. He's making his way towards Professor Oak. Uh, And then when he finally gets there, the first person he runs into is Gary. Yes, Gary. 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 And uh, we'll come to learn more about Gary as the season progresses, but Gary is Professor Oak's grandson who is not shy about dropping names and, and, and you know, flaunting the fact that he's the, the grandson of the professor. Um, and he's a jerk. Total and jerk. I, and I don't like him. No, he's nasty. I don't like him. He's a um, we'll, we'll come to find out that Gary, uh, you know, he plays a much, much more important role as the story progresses. But he held he holds up Ash for a little while. Ash is then forced even to be more late, and he sees Professor Oak after Gary goes away, like in a parade style of people cheering for him. Gary was such a jerk; he wouldn't even like show Ash the po- what the, the Pokemon. The Pokemon could, right? Yeah. So he's a jerk. He's a jerk. Totally no jerk. good. Um, and Professor Oak comes out. He kind of gives Ash a hard time that he's late. Says that you know uh, maybe there's Pokemon left, and they go inside and. Go through the, the original, you know, starters from the game, uh, Squirtle, Bulbasaur, Char- uh, Charmander, um, and they've all been taken. And then, as a consolation prize, Professor Oak says that there is one more uh, Pokemon available. It's a little trap door in the table. Another Pokemon comes up, a uh, Pokeball comes up, and it's ultimately... Pika. And Pika's ball actually has a lightning bolt on right. it. Right, which is awesome. <clears throat> which is awesome, yeah. Which is awesome. Um... And I wonder how Professor Oak got him in the Pika, in the in the ball, ball to begin to with. To begin with, yeah, we we learn real quick that Pikachu is not normal, and he's a uh, he's a little bit rough around the edges and uh, is mean and mean spirited and does not like to be in his Pokeball. So the second they take him out of the Pokeball, um, Ash sees how cute he is and goes to you know do cute stuff with him and. Pikachu shocks the crap out of him, um, which is awesome because then that begins that dynamic of how Ash and Pikachu are on the different, you know, are not on the same page yes. with training. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's a consistent thing that happens through all the seasons where at some point Pikachu is shocking Ash. That happens at, a lot. At some point, that yeah. That happens a lot. And it has a real classic, like, get shocked animation style, like, you know, big <laughs> eyes and x-ray vision kind of stuff. It's so awesome. So w- once he has possession of Pikachu, uh, they walk outside and there is some people there cheering for Ash, including Ash's mom, who has a nice care package for him. I love that part. She completely blows up his spot. She's like, oh my gosh, here, I got your clean underwear and here's your yeah. clothes and here's your gloves and blah, blah, blah. And it's just so great. She plays him out and... um <laughs> She's she right away picks up on the fact that Pikachu is not in the Pokeball and is like, why is your Pokemon not in the Pokeball? Yeah. Uh, you know, he's a little weird. And uh, Pikachu then um, 
proceeds to shock the entire crowd. He wasn't feeling that. He's like, oh, weird. He turns and looks, and boom! Boom. Everybody gets it. And it's like an extended, (laughs) it's like an extended shock, and like everyone in the crowd is just like frying out. Their eyeballs are popping out. So good. So, so good. Well, right before that, Ash is actually trying to catch, trying to get Uh, Pikachu to go inside his Pokeball, and... Pikachu not hearing it. Ash is throwing the ball and Pika's just swatting it back. And he's throwing the ball and he's swatting it back. Yeah, that's hilarious. I love that scene. Um, again, just that, that silly dynamic of, you know, all right, well, this isn't two humans. This is a, a human and a Pokemon, but they're interacting in a way like, like humans. It was, it's just really cool. It was really cool to see that. Um, and that's it. And, they're all they're off on their adventure. He's yeah. a ten year old kid, and he says goodbye to his mom with a with a book bag full of stuff and a weird monster, and that's it. <laughs> that's they it, they yeah. go off on this. He's out. He's out. Um, and then you know this is very timely of watching this episode again and having Ash run into a Pidgey uh, at first because you know with the Pokemon Go madness, yeah, you know there's many Pidgeys about yes. <laughs> it's like everywhere you actually, look there's Pidgeys actually this entire episode had you know the Pidgey the Rattata I was waiting for Weedle if yep, Weedle yep. was in this episode <laughs> it would have been the trifecta for me at least with Pokemon Go because those three Pokemon are just forever in my path I'll take them every time and have an evolution party all the time but so he, <laughs> they, he sees a Pidgey Ash is, Ash is acting all cocky um, you know, and of course tries to get Pikachu to, uh, to do an attack and Pikachu isn't hearing it and climbs a tree and just starts trolling Ash the whole time, laughing at him, uh, trying to get this, uh, this Pidgey and, you know, walks, pretty much walks up to the Pokemon and gets a gust attack and a sand attack or whatever and gets totally rocked by Pidgey, which is hilarious. Um, and the entire time Pikachu is laughing, laughing in the tree like a uh, like a troll, which is hilarious. Cause, yes. And you were saying, you know, I don't know how often we're gonna have to see through the season, but how often you actually hear Pikachu he- laugh? Because yeah, because in this, it's episode, a weird, it's yeah, different. It's like, like a human laugh. It's like yeah. a ha 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 kind of laugh. It's not, but he does do a Pika laugh, like a, you know, Pika, ha, right, ha, right, right, ha, right. you know, but the, the first couple of times, it's more like a human laugh, which I, I'm not, I'm not really, I wasn't really feeling, so I'm glad that that ended. I don't know, but yeah, but I don't know if that continues. I don't think it, it continues. I, I don't know how far it continues. It but. definitely is not something that's consistent, because I, don't I would, him. Yeah, 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 you would remember. So... Ash is trying to get this Pidgey. He he's running out of ideas and decides to throw a rock. And uh, big mistake. Big mistake because the rock ends up hitting a Spearow again. Another Pokemon Go thing where it's like you know you're handling Pidgeys all day. You see the Spearow and you're like level three. You're like whoa, a Spearow. So this is it's the same thing. And uh, you know the Pokedex comes on and starts saying that Spearows are aggressive and you know they will attack humans and. They're jealous of trained, you know, or wild Pokemon can be, you know, are jealous of trained Pokemon. And um, and the Pokedex has actually got a really funny sense of humor as well. The way it delivers its information and the timing of the delivery I, of the information. I don't remember that at all watching yeah. this originally. So it was, uh, it's very yeah, funny it caught, watching yeah, it now. Exactly. Because, it caught me off guard because I was like, I don't remember it being funny like, like well, this. Well, now with it, because it, it almost has like a... a, a you a know, new relevance. A, yeah, yes. like a trolley, you know, internet style, you know, mocking of Ash. And it's funny. It's great. It's yeah. funny. It's, it's it great. really is. So the Spiro comes out of nowhere and starts pretty much wrecking shop and just starts taking Ash out. Um, and then starts going after Pikachu and downs Pikachu. Um, and, you know, he's not listening to Ash uh, and not attacking. So it, it's just kind of like a... Um, a really bad scene because you know everyone's getting jacked and then what 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 ends up happening when uh the the spiro so gets so they so they ash grabs pikachu and they start running and when ash starts running he comes through the woods and then they get to the waterfall yes. and he jumps he jumps into the waterfall and he passes a carp, magic carp, yes. which is great. And then two seconds later, he passes a Gyarados, and I right. crap my pants. I was like, "Oh my god!" And he starts swimming real fast. And then in my head, I'm like, "You can't swim faster than a Gyarados." But there are, he was already running, though. He was already running from the from the crowd. So through through the spear, the spear ended up getting hurt, 
and then um, let out a cry and calls an entire flock of Spiro. Yeah. That's what began like this chase scene. Um, so Pikachu and Ash are now running from like 25 Spiro. Mm-hmm. Um, that's when they jump into the water and, you know, you get the cat, the carp, uh, magic carp cameo, which is hilarious. Um, cause I immediately just started going like yeah. carp, carp, yeah. you know, like, and when he gets to the other side, you know, they, they show Misty for the first time. She's fishing. Um, she's got a bobber in the water and thinks she's getting, gets a big fish and actually throws, ends up throwing the catch onto the land and it ends up being Ash and Pikachu. Um, and immediately, uh, Misty just kind of like starts brushing off Ash and is like, oh my God, are you okay? Like, it doesn't care about him. She's talking to the Pokemon. Mm-hmm. So that's funny because that starts that whole dynamic. Um, but it was cool seeing Misty just because she's so iconic. And, you know, the side ponytail and... Yes. All yeah. her cuteness. Yeah, she's very cute. She's very cute. Um, but Ash doesn't think so. Ash is just hyper-focused <laughs> and jacks her bike. And, <laughs> you know, he's like, yeah, I'll, he give it, I'll give it back to you one day. One like, day. totally jacks it. Um, and, you know, they're just, like, speeding away. And this flock of Spiro are still chasing. Um, and all of a sudden, the tone of the episode kind of, like nose dives and it gets starts getting a little dark um and you see pikachu all jacked up um they jump off a cliff on uh, on the bike and wipe out and pikachu rolls out like lifeless yeah um and ash is all banged up and that's when he starts begging pikachu to get yeah, back get, in, get, you get know, into the please, ball you it's know. the only way i can save you and pikachu's stubborn but is is still not Complying and is just laying there all banged up and refuses to go into the Pokeball. But then when he sees Ash stand up in front of all those Spiros and is ready to take the blunt That's of, it. of it. the attack for him to protect him, Pika, he steps up. He starts feeling trusted. He starts feeling the trust and, and r- runs up, jumps up on Ash's back and uh, jumps towards the flock and bang, big electric shock attack and... Takes them all out. Takes them all out. Yep. And it, it's it's at that point where Pikachu finally trusts Ash, um, and you can see that bond like beginning. To I, I wouldn't let you see, but I cried a little bit. Oh my god! <laughs> Shut your face. <laughs> now, it, there's one thing is I'll, I'll pull pull the curtain back a little bit. I cry at everything. <laughs> now, <laughs> like, yeah. Like now, yeah, yeah. Like you know, when I was younger, it was no big deal. But I, I think since I had. We had our, our son. Like, oh, yeah. I cry at everything now. Like, yeah. I cried oh, at oh, The I Hobbit in the movies. I was bawling. You cry. Like, you <laughs> cry sometimes when we, we watch the movies. Yeah. So it's bad. So, but yeah, it, 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 it turned into like this really emotional scene of, uh, of Ash and Pikachu kind of bonding. <laughs> and I was like, man, th- this is Pokemon. This is what it's all about. Like, this is, this is the, 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 the it factor yeah. of what, Kids wanted to be trainers. Like when, when your little brother wanted to be a trainer, he wanted to be a trainer because he really cared about Pokemon. Yeah. And our son now, it's like he just loves the Pokemon and it like, it goes past like having a cool Pokemon or a strong Pokemon. Like Josh's favorite, our son Josh, our, his favorite Pokemon in Pokemon Go is one of his Weedles. He that, like, loves his 10 CP he, Weedle. 10 CP Weedle. He will not get rid of it. And yeah, he, like, it's his favorite yep, one. Just because yep. he's just so cute and he just he, loves it's it. It's the funniest thing. And then, like that's that's the it factor. That's like what makes... The bond. The bond. Yeah. And, and seeing it in the show again was like, this is it. This is, you know, yeah. this is so cool. Like, well, it that, really reminded me. Yeah, and that was like, for me, the opening scene of this episode... With Ash in his room, and I, like, Snorlax is my favorite Pokemon. And seeing that Snorlax thing, beanbag chair, on his floor, like, for me, that excitement was there. I was just like, oh, Snorlax, oh my god, he's so cute, look at him, oh my god, he's so fat, I love him, I can't take it. And it's just that, that kind of a bond that I've had with Pokemon for, oh my god, almost how many tw- years? Almost 20 years, yeah, yeah, almost 20 years. That's what makes this... Genre of cat, you know. the franchise. The franchise, the franchise. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, it's yeah. It, you know, it, seeing like the little cameos in the intro and seeing Magikarp into the water and then Gyarados come out, like that kind of wow factor was just like, I. That's you know the, the intrigue. You know, you you have all these other characters that, you know, 
through the cartoon, they had just an amazing ability to have emotional connections just from seeing them and then, you know, recognizing them from the game and recognizing them from the card game and or it, it you, you fall in love with these characters and, and, and that's, I don't know, that's just yeah. the it factor for me. Oh, and one really cool scene at the very end um, when, you know, Pikachu and Ash wake up all banged up um, and up in the sky they see Ho-Oh flying away, you know, yeah. in the rainbow and it's like looking super majestic. Uh, and then the Pokedex comes out and says, you know, there's still Pokemon that, you know, we don't know. It was like a precursor to the whole thing. So it's like episode one, they're already planting the seeds that, you know, that this is going to be something that's just going to continue to grow. And it's just, there's more wonder and, you know, there's just so many darn Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> like, it just yeah. never, it just never end. ends. It doesn't end. It just never ends. And for for a minute, that was one of the things that had me fall off with the Pokemon was like, it was just so many mm. at once at first, at least for me, it became overwhelming. I felt like, like I can never, com- like, like my seat will never be complete. How can I keep going on and on and on and on? But, and that's part of the reason why I fell off. But then when the, my son got into it, when Josh got into it, and I started seeing the cards again, and I started seeing the new characters and how stinking cute they are. <laughs> I just fell all over again, and I realized like how how much I loved it to begin with. And then I kind of kicked myself in the butt, like, "Damn, I shouldn't stop collecting." I saved myself a lot but, of money though yeah. <laughs> between those years. <laughs> so let's talk about the cards real quick. So. Uh, we go to a weekly Pokemon League. We're, we're super into and and are really in in the mix of the TCG kind of universe because uh, you know we just getting back into it. Like we did the pre-release for Fates Collide. We just did the pre-release last week for Steam Siege, and um, so we're playing the cards. You know, doing using the card game a lot. Um, and Melissa has the greatest <laughs> luck. When, with her polls, and I when, when you know she said that she was going to do this podcast with me, I you know told her that she's going to have to explain to everybody her luck and how amazing it is because it's not it, right, it's, dude. All right, it's so not right. whenever I buy any cards right. in this household, I have to get triplicate. So I have to get one for me, one for one for Josh, and one for Melissa. Um, so there's just a just ridiculous volume of cards and packs being opened at all times. And my son has ridiculous luck. He just opened a Venusaur box yesterday and got his, two megas. Yeah, for his birthday, we we yep. got we got it at GameStop, and came home <laughs> and he like, the kid pulls Mega Blastoise and Mega, Mega Gardevoir, Gardevoir uh, full, full art. art. <laughs> yeah, and a Charizard and a Hollow Charizard Radiant. Yeah. So he's like, which is awesome because that card has a trainer in the frame with Charizard. So I love that. Um, but. Yeah, so he has ridiculous pulls, and Meli- I got meanwhile, Melissa in the store box. Meanwhile, before. She, she can't catch a break. She can't catch a break, and it's like, it's hilarious. I'm going to I'm gonna get this on film, but she threatens to stop collecting every after time. every pack of cards she opens. I, I swear, I really don't want to do it anymore. Because. I really don't. She gets played so hard, so she gets the Venusaur box, and, um, you know, she's opening the Generations packs. Now... EXs are like, you know, we're, we're EX people in this house. Like, we get an EX, we're excited, you know, that, that's what it's all about when we're, when we're opening boosters. So, she, she's had a hard time getting some EXs. Yeah. And, but she had Mega, no, you had, um, Sylveon EX. Yeah. So she had that one, that one card she had pulled. So, what happened with the Venusaur box? <laughs> I, feel, I open a pack and I go, watch. I'm going to pull another Sylveon EX. It'll be the only card I ever pull. What do I pull? <laughs> Stinking Sylveon EX. All right, so now you've got two. So now she's got a dupe of it. And she's only one pack in, so I'm like, don't sweat it. Two more packs, you know, something's going to drop. You're good. You're good. Keep it moving. You're like, you just move on. I start opening a pack. Next pack, nothing. Open the next pack. I do the card trick. I flip it over. I start... Flipping through the cards, first one, second one, third one, and I get a glimpse of, I'm like, I got something. I got something. That's the, the EX, when you see the dark border, it, it's like you get you get all fired up and you're like, you don't want to look at the rest of the cards, you just want to go to the back. So I real quick get to it. What is it? 
Zoyan, so yeah, yes. Are you two in the same me? box. Like, really? Are you kidding me? So now, and this is exactly why I don't want to collect the cards anymore. This because happens every, every time. time. Every time. It doesn't. All the mythical boxes that we've bought. You've got played. I've gotten played. <laughs> and not only do I get played, but Ken and Josh both get ridiculous pulls. Megas. And it just, it's... Go go on, on our YouTube channel. I'll really put the, right. the, the link will be in the notes. Um, I opened a Blastoise EX, you know, red and blue collection box with the Generation Boosters. And the pulls were bananas. <laughs> <laughs> so I got Mega Blastoise. Uh, I think, I don't want to spoil it all, but it was, it was sick pulls, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, it's it was just not right. And this is what makes me want to stop buying cards. No. But I can't. Like I have I have hope. But then every time I, I open a pack, my hope is crushed by <laughs> duplicates start, or literally nothing. I'm like, gonna start filming it, but I'm gonna film it on the sly. So you don't even know. So you ca- you well, catch my can, true yeah, disappointment. That's what I'm talking about because dis- share my true disappointment because with the world. This being a clean podcast doesn't really capture Melissa's uh, true vocabulary. <laughs> so if I, you know, can keep, yeah, keep these, it in keep these with, a, with a clean tag and then I can get you in your natural, you know, you know, environment, you know, letting it fly and just put that on YouTube, I think the listening audience would appreciate that because it's comedic gold. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it's, good. it's amazing. I'm glad. Um, oh, one thing we didn't talk about with the episode was the Who's That Pokemon? Oh yeah. So true. this was like one of my favorite things um with these episodes yeah. was the bumpers in and out of the commercials with the who's that Pokemon. And of course this episode was Pikachu. Um it makes me think of that vine and I gotta show you that vine of that I was saying of the who's that Pokemon. Oh yeah. yeah. So that that's a really good thing. I'll, I'll put the link in the notes too. You know <laughs> this is just that that look I remember thinking about that like Watching the episodes and like can't wait for, for you know for Pokemon. who's that Pokemon because that was just it was just a really fun thing that they did. Um, oh, and if you hear a dog shaking, that's our that's our dog Star Cupcake. <laughs> she's just she's chilling. She's with hanging us, right? out. Um, all right, so you know if you guys listen to Toys for Games, I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of people come over from Toys for Games. You know that that is like a uh, I think it's either a 14 or a 15 hour long podcast every week. Now, it's not seriously. It's like a three hour podcast. Um, we're going to try to keep these podcasts Three between hours. it, dude, they go hard. That's they go good. hard. Well, it's like, you know, sometimes they'll have like a 15, 20 minute, 45 minute conversation about, you know, steak and potatoes or something. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's, it's hilarious. If you get them started on like college football. It's over. Yep. It, it, it's a, it's a long, it's a long road. That it's would a be long a short conversation out. with me. I'll- and me too. Are you kidding me? Um, but we're gonna we're gonna try to keep these episodes around thirty to forty five minutes, um, just so they're easy on uh, you know for everyone to get it in every week because we are gonna be doing these every week. So um, I think if we do thirty to forty five, it's not gonna take a toll on our life too much, and, yeah. and not gonna you know it's it'll be something that uh, if you have a commute to work, you know you might be able to fit into one uh, one bit of travel, but. In addition to the episode, I do want to talk about Pokemon Go. Um, Pokemon Go in this household has been... We just got back from being out. Like, we have gone out every night, um, pretty much every night. Yeah, every night, the every weather's night. good. Um, I think I just hit the 100-kilometer the medal. Did you really? My, yeah, I did. Good um, job, jogger. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, Way to jog it out. <laughs> Way to jog it out. It's really me driving in a car at 11 miles an hour. That's so kidding. unfair, dude. That's so not fair because all my jogging miles are straight up walking miles because I got the dog and Josh all day. So we yeah. go. But, you know, it's nice, too, because we're out and we walk the boardwalk and we walk the parks. and I've dealt with the heat more in the past three weeks it's been a heat wave in jersey yeah, I, honestly i have a little bit of jealousy over that because yeah. all these years i tried to get you outside in the <laughs> summer with me and i can't and this stinking game comes out and you're the other night i swear i i wanted to lose my mind when you told me that you went out to red bank for three hours and i was like it's sweltering hot outside and he went out for three hours walking and in part of my mind i was like that's awesome. You know, I'm so glad he was out and experiencing that and having fun doing that, what he loves. And in the same note, I was like, 
Pokemon could get him to do it, but I couldn't get him to do it before. Don't take this away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I've waited 20 years to catch Pokemon. Don't, don't take this away. I love it, though, but it's great no. because it's a, it's a whole new bonding thing for our family. Like It's bonded us on a different level, which is it's just exciting and fun. Well, you know, we're tech people, and we... Um, you know, we're we're usually attached to a screen in, in some way or, or another, and we're we're shut ins for the most part. Uh, so you know, it, it's nice to still be able to use technology and but not be bound to four walls. Yeah. So it, yeah. that that's what what I think is uh, the real magic of it. You know, not only are we out, but like, I mean, just the people that we see. I mean, it's that instant camaraderie of like. You know, two people with the same car driving in opposite directions and see each other and like give the wave yeah. of you know, or like, that, that nod know, of what's like, up, red ninety three Mercury Sable. You know, like <laughs> what's up, man. You know, like that. That's that's the the you get that bond. Yeah. You know, and it's like you see people and people that are overtly playing and not worried about you know what people think. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's really cool. Um, I don't know. It, it's it's. I haven't touched the console game in three weeks. Yeah. You know? I, I, I stopped playing all my other uh, mobile regular games. Yeah, mobile games. Yeah. Melissa is the most hardcore, <laughs> casual mobile gamer ever. <laughs> um, and has been like candy crushing for years. No, and that, no I started Zoom candy Zoom crushing for like, years. Zoom Zoom, yeah. I got that um, bad with Zoom Zoom. But and, it's like uh, hardcore though. Like if yeah. you talk to her when she's Zooming... I won't hear you. It's a problem. Yeah. It'll, you know... A Zoom, when I'm it'll Zooming, It'll result yeah. in, in strikes. No, 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 don't talk to me. Thousand hand slap. Because you only have a certain amount of time. Yeah, it's, 60 seconds. Yeah, get off me. Get <laughs> off me. I got 60 <laughs> seconds to get over a million. Back up. Yeah, but, um, but yeah, so every week we're going to talk about Pokemon Go, um, you know, and then as we get into the groove of things, we're going to start introducing a little bit more of core... Uh, TCG talk because you know we're we're playing every week um, and we're getting new cards every week. So as a companion with our YouTube channel, um, you'll be able to see uh, unboxings and ultimately we'll discuss that stuff on the on the podcast at the end of the week. So that stuff's all coming in the next week. So um, I think that's it for episode one. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope we weren't too rough. This is the first time Melissa's ever been in front of a mic. Yeah, it's um, weird. So you know. <laughs> We had a lot of uh, five minute takes, you know, getting started when she would hear like my announcer voice. Of, it's so, it's she was so laughing good. for like 30 minutes. It. Like it was, it was a bad scene. I couldn't handle but, it. But so, you know, um, hopefully everything is okay. Sound quality and all that stuff. We're, we're, we're brand new at this. Um, but we're going to be doing it every week. So um, thanks to everybody. Yeah. Thanks for listening. And I hope you listen to us again. See you next week. Peace. Hey everyone, Ken here, and I wanted to thank you for checking out episode one of Gotta Watch Em All. Listening back, I noticed our levels were a little bit wonky in the beginning, and I was definitely anxious and a bit nervous once we got started, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and will continue to join us on our journey to watch them all. You can drop us a line on Twitter at Gotta Watch Em All, and visit gottawatchemall.com for links to us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, and more. You can also send us an email at gottawatchemallpodcast at gmail.com. And be sure to check out toysforgames.com to learn about all the great podcasts and content on this network. I do want to take a second to talk about the Patreon page we have set up over at patreon.com slash gottawatchemall. Patreon is a site that allows fans to directly support their favorite content creators for as little as a dollar. Those that contribute are rewarded with various perks that range from access to our exclusive Slack chat to sponsoring a segment on the podcast. We would greatly appreciate it if you checked it out or shared it. Thanks again, trainers. This episode is to be continued.